In this tutorial, we're going to talk about animation, setting keyframes. The first a set of keyframes that I'd like to show you how to set are for rotation of your tires. Now we have this controller, which uh, controls the rotation of the back tires. And we have this rotation, uh, or this controller, which controls the rotation of the tires for the front as well as the steering. Now, uh, in the previous tutorial, we uh, talked about rotation order, which is very important to get set correctly prior to using a dual-use controller for the purpose of uh, making sure that you get the um, accurate rotation that you want on your vehicle. Now, let's go ahead and we select our back controller, F on my keyboard, uh, to zoom in, and you can see better in this capture that it's rotating the back of the tire. Now, what I'd like to do is come on in here. We'll go ahead and delete what's currently here. Before I do that, I can show you what's happening. Uh, when we um, rig and animate tires. It's a constant rotation uh, of a 360 degrees that we're trying to accomplish repeated. So you can see that my first frame, if I select on that key, you can see in the time slider here where the red lines are, that those are uh, set keyframes. So I select on the curve in the uh, curve editor here can see that this particular value on the rotation X is set to 0.3. Now, this initially was set to 0, uh, but so sometimes it'll take on uh, a different value close to the original set keyframe. And if I scrub over in my time slider to frame 10, you can see that this particular value is set at 359. That's one shy of 360 degrees. So uh, as uh, when you're prepping loop animations for your game engine, you want to create one loop, one cycle, and have it repeat. In this case, the tire rotation is 360 degrees, so we're setting a loop animation on frame 1, set at 0, on frame 10, set at 359, so that when the a game code repeats that cycle, it's repeating it 360 degrees. <coughs> Alright, so um, as we're creating an animation, a translated animation, uh, usually in game animation, the translation is done by game code and the short looping animations are played in addition to that. So uh, if you are creating an animation with translation, such as we are for, then you will be creating it with translation as well. And the way that you can do that is simply repeating this cycle uh, in the curve editor. And I will show you how to do that. Uh, once we um, Let's go ahead and strip this out, begin from the beginning actually. So I want to bring my vehicle back into my perspective view and I'm going to delete this uh, animation. So now you can see as I scrub through there, there's no animation associated with this controller. What's taking it out of the scene is the uh, translation that we've put on this translation node. So go ahead and select this again and we will um, go back to frame 1 and set our first keyframe. The way that we do that is by selecting on that particular uh, rotation X which is available for keyframing. Right click and uh, select key selected. Okay, And there you can see the uh, red line in the time slider there on frame 1 
Additionally, you can see a little dot right here in the uh, time slider on frame one at zero, which is the, uh, the indicator that we just typed in. Now, uh, we want to make a 10 frame cycle animation. So we're going here to, to frame 10, and we have our controller selected, as you can see, still. And uh, at frame 10, we're going to go ahead and put in a value of 359. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and select that again. Right click and say key selected. So what we've done, you can see here in the time slider, if we select on this button that says frame all, you can see that on frame one, our value was zero. And we follow this timeline, and at frame 10, we have a value of 359. So we have a complete cycle animation, which we can then select and uh, export for our uh, game engine. Now in order to get that to repeat, what we can do then is continue on to frame 20, which is uh, again 10 frames, and we can just take that value back down to zero, and key that frame, and we've created um, a, uh, a loop but it's a backward loop in comparison to the frontward loop that we've just created. Now, when the car is traveling or even um, spinning its wheels at, at this particular rate, you're not going to be able, your eye is not going to be able to determine the difference between um, going frontward and backward. So this is how we can get away with uh, doing these particular type of cycle animations for a translated animation. And once we have that, we can repeat that as many times uh, as the duration of the animation that we need it. Um, this car, this animation is 100 frames, so we'll go ahead and create that for the duration of that 100 frames. This is 20 frames. We're going to go ahead and select these. Uh, we'll go ahead and select these. And right up here at Edit, you can copy, and we're going to open our Options box. Make sure that All is selected, Copy Keys, and then we're going to come back to Edit, select Paste Option box, and the time range is going to be indicated at Start. Then we can go ahead and paste those keys, but before we do, we also can indicate how many times, how many copies, that we want it to paste. So if we have a 20 frame animation and we want it to go the duration of 100 frames, then we know that we need five of those. I'm going to plug that in. And say paste keys. And now we have uh, the animation cycling at all 100 frames. Now, the uh, second thing that we're going to do, I see there might be a problem here. For some reason, it's planted two frames at frame 95. So we're going to go right in here and correct that. It's easy to do. Uh, go ahead and select that. Now, I don't see that there's a problem at any other frame, so I'm not sure why it chose this last one. But what we can do is come right in here, select that uh, frame, and simply delete it. and uh, we have a correct cycle. So we can come on in here and uh, take a look at this. The way that we can move these, if you're not happy with how this came out, you can go ahead and come in here individually. F on my keyboard, we'll zoom it in. And middle mouse button to move these keys around. In um, Max, you will notice that you won't be able to see the uh, the curves off 
of the uh, time slider. So if you indicate 100 frames of animation in your time slider, it will not allow you to see past that. You'll have to come back in here, modify your um, your settings, uh, and up the uh, number of frames in your animation in order to see that. But in Maya, it allows you to see them. Now, um, in working, this is um, like a Bezier curve. It is a Bezier curve. It gives you handles to work with. And so you can control certain aspects of your animation curve by controlling the direction of the handles. Now, I uh, want um, an animation that uh, is continuing to cycle with no slow in and no slow out. And what that simply means is you can see here that there is no arc in that particular curve when we're coming into this animation. But as we're coming out of the animation, it does arc into that keyframe. And that's what's called a slow out. As you're coming in, there's no slow in as this is portrayed here, slowing in to this particular, uh, from one keyframe to the next, and then slowing out again uh, before you get to the next. Um, here that's not evident, but if I select on that and come right up here to this particular icon that says flat tangents, I can easily uh, click that button and it will flatten out that tangent giving me a slow in. But in this case I do not want slow in and slow out because that would look like my wheel was slowing with every rotation and I want it to uh, not have any slow down. I want it to continue to repeat that cycle without any slow down. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and select all of these curves or all of these uh, keyframes, these points, and I'm going to break the tangent with this particular icon right here. It says linear tangents. I'm going to simply click on that, and what that does is it breaks that tangent so that there's a linear, uh, the the uh, the uh, straightest um, the straightest tangent. <laughs> from one point to the next so that there is no slow in and slow out. It'll be a constant uh, rotation now on that particular animation. Alright, so with that set now, uh, as a game artist, if you're going to put this into a game engine, you'll select the first uh, 10 frames of your animation. And um, you will then uh, export that data, and the data will be used to repeat. Uh, and uh, the scale of the animation can also be adjusted with game code, which means the rotation of that um, object can be slowed down or sped up, but the cycle of the animation will remain the same. Alright, so um, that's a basic rotation uh, animation uh, for your tires and how to set that up. Uh, having the duration set like this for this particular animation with translation is important so that your wheel will continue to turn as the animation plays, as the transition of the vehicle the translation of the vehicle is being animated as well. Alright, so go ahead and um, if we delete the translation on this, sends it back to the initial location then you can uh, come right in here and you'll be able to see the um, spinning of the tire now there's still some rotation 
value left on this, so we can go ahead and delete that as well. So that you can, we'll just play it, so that you can see that there's a rotational value on that tire. And uh, when this is rendered, I don't know if you can get a good view of it here because everything's black. Uh, you will not be able to determine, your eye won't be able to pick up what's backward, when it's running backward and when it's running forward. Alright, so let's undo and put rotation and translation back on this vehicle, follow it over, and now uh, we can go ahead and set the rotation values on the front of the uh, tire as well.